Hello and welcome to another episode of Once a Warrior. My name is Monty Beetham and with me today is the Little General, Stacey Jones. Thanks for your time, my man. Oh, it's Mont. Good that to nickname, see you. That nickname, where did you get it from? I don't know. I can't remember Mont. So I just, uh, it was during the season and it just popped up. And But, you know, it's not a nickname that I go by. You know, it's probably more, more in the media or, you know, when we're playing. But I actually can't remember. Well, another name that gets thrown around a lot is the goat, and I know you don't like it, Stace. You're a very humble man, but that is because of moments like these. Stace, memories uh, when you watch that back, that footage? Yeah, obviously some really good memories. It was a long time ago, Mont. Um, but yeah, I, I had a really good time playing footy, especially at, uh, in that uh, you know early 2000 period, um, you know, when you were uh, captaining the side and we had a good core of uh, experienced players um, and a good core of, of young kids coming through that were, were very talented. Uh, you were the greatest player I played alongside. Um, I just want to know from you. I was going to put you on the spot. You don't have to think about it too long. Um, but who was that? Who was that warrior for you? Oh yeah, that is on the spot. Oh, you know what? I, for me, um, was was Arwen. You know, I guess because we're you know um, very close. You know, best mates playing footy, growing up together, and I really knew his game. He knew my game, and uh, I knew you know when he. You know, stepped over that that white line to run onto the field. You knew what he was going to give because he put his body on the line every week, and he picked up I don't know how many injuries, reconstructions, and, and that all over his body. And um, you know, he he actually got you know tougher as he got older. Yeah, you were day one at this club, Stace. Uh, you were one of the the first uh, from a junior perspective to come through. Um, was it what you expected? Oh, there was a lot of hype around. Um, leading into 1995 season and previous to that I was still at school uh, in 94 and 93 and um, there was a group of players growing up in Auckland and, and you're a little bit a little bit younger than us but you had like uh, Joe Vagana, Nigel Vagana. I remember Joe was in the team be, before me um, yeah. and watching what he was he was doing you know I thought wow that's that's cool. It was an amazing time because you sort of come straight from school and then you're rubbing shoulders with, you know, um, stars of the game, you know, Stephen Kearney, Greg Alexander, Phil Blake, Dean Bell. We had a good core of senior players when I, you know, when I first came in that, you know, obviously looked after me. Talk about that debut, it's got a try as well. What, what do you remember? Well, actually, it was a little bit different then. When I made my debut, I only played five minutes. So I, um, it was against Parramatta and it was, you only had two fresh reserves. Yeah and then you could get as many as you wanted to go and be on the bench from reserve grade. Mm. You know, you could have 10 players on the bench um, for an NRL team, but could only use four, and two of them had to be fresh. So it was a bit different back in there. So I played my first game against Paramount. I probably don't consider that my, my debut. No. Um, I consider probably against Cronulla a few weeks later um, my, my debut game for the club. I didn't feel pressure going into that game. You know, like um, John made it fairly clear to me, just go out there and enjoy yourself. You got these other players around you that, that's, that'll, that'll help you. And um, we were lucky enough to go over there and, and play a decent game of footy. And fortunately for me, it was a game game we won. And um, and I was able to stay in the team the, the following week. Okay, then you went on to play 100 consecutive games. Um, was was that luck? Was that management? Because that's, that's tough to do, man. Yeah, I guess for myself, you know, Monza, it did not have to do much tackling when you're a halfback back there. You've got to tackle now if you're a halfback, but yeah. <laughs> I got I got looked after, you know, so uh, the body was, was pretty good. So I was very fortunate that um, I didn't pick up any major injuries. had quite a few little injuries that, that hurt me, but uh, no no major ones that, that, you know, was able to keep me off the field. Who early on was, was, was crucial in your career? 
Um, oh, I thought all my all the coaches, you know, I mean, you know, John had his certain ways, Frank had his certain ways, um, and then obviously uh, Mark Graham, you know, he was he was hard, mm. and unfortunately for 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 around Mark's era, there was a lot of disjointedness in yeah. the club. Eh? you know, we it was sort of where we were heading off the field, it was all up in the air, and hence what happened, you know, not long yeah. after Mark left, or when Mark left, yeah. And what Daniel was able to do um, when he came on as a coach, and I probably didn't really get a good grasp of the game until Daniel came along. Um, and it was probably more like the experience that you got playing younger, and you know, by the time you're mid-twenties, you know, so I felt that's when I really developed um, my game is understanding the game properly. The game was becoming more professional around that area, that yeah. era, that early 2000s. So there was a lot more um, video analysis. I think with Daniel sort of, um, he was real technical, but also made made it simple. You know, made things pretty simple. Whereas probably in the past, the other coach probably didn't have the technology that, that Daniel was yeah. able to get first um, at first hand. The other thing we didn't have back then was um, welfare managers to stay on top and be so consistent for so long. Well, how how were you so consistent? My, my welfare manager was probably the mad butcher. <laughs> <laughs> he was always around the club and he mm. always travelled. He always travelled with the team. Um, you know, you'd get up and go for a walk and go and have breakfast with him and you know, after a game you'd have a beer with him, you know. So he was a good person to sort of, you know, put things into perspective, you know, if a footy, if you had a, a tough day on the footy field, you know, someone like the Mad Butch was always pretty good to mm. be around. Mm. What about game day itself? Um, you know, besides the um, spewing, because I, I swore every game you, you would spew no matter what. Half time. It was always half time. Half time. Sometimes when, I thought it was pre game. No, 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 it was, it was half always half time. Wasn't good. But the the mindset, uh, the mental preparation that you went into the game, uh, knowing that you sort of had to sort of run the ship or, or, or drive the bus. When things were, were kept simple, you know, um, certainly helped my game. And I reckon that's when we played our best footy, you know, when we didn't have a lot of structure around the team. Yeah. And we could offload the ball and, and just really in, in enjoy the, the free flow of it. But I, honestly, I thought back in those days that um, when we were going, you know, pretty good, we we trained really well. Yeah. You know, if we didn't train well, I, I always had a bad feeling. You know, I always had a bad feeling. But I knew if we trained well, boys were having a bit of fun on the field, on the training paddock. Okay, I knew these were on today. You know, yeah. especially those young ones, eh? especially Torps and yeah. Henry and Franny and Ali. Those boys, I love playing with those guys. You know, and I love seeing them have fun. You were always one of those players that if I saw you across the change room, I felt that much better about our chances to win that game. We know we spoke about Owen Good and Bill B, uh, one of your favourite Warriors, uh, most important. Who, who, who was that player that you looked across the room and you thought, you know what, I, I feel better about our chances winning today because he's there? I would have to say Ali, eh? You know, you, yeah. you'd have to agree with that. That, You know, if, if you're the opposition, he's the man you got to really take care of. You've got to take care of Ali. You know, and I, I saw teams, you know, if they got up in front and got in Ali's face, it probably flustered him a little bit, you know, but if yeah. you gave him room, yeah. you know, he would tear you, tear you to pieces. And Ali did all, all his work when he had the ball nice and early. He, his footwork was just, you know, second to none. He could drag in three defenders and still get an offload away, you know. That's what made him so, um, you know, so special. And when you go back to 2002 grand final, and it's something we see over and over again, it's not just here from this side of the bridge, it's just on the other side of the bridge, just that, that, that try you scored in the grand final. Um, can you talk us through that try and what was going through your mind? Oh, look, not, you know. Um, yeah, I'd give that back any day for yeah. for the win, you know. That was, oh, geez, yeah, it was, it was, that was a tough, tough, mm. never been you know, felt so bad after a game, you know. You know, obviously there was the fist pump, and we wouldn't see that often from you, but obviously you are quite quite emotional, um, you know, at that stage through your mind. I mean, it was a great try in, in a period of the game where we, where we needed it. Did, what were you thinking? Oh, I just thought, hey, we're, we're a good chance here, you know, we're a good chance, and, you know, right up to half-time, um, I remember we, we kick a ball and the ball bounces the wrong way at moments like that you think if only that had gone our way and Freddie decides that okay I'm going to grab the game by the scruff of the neck and you know, it wasn't until probably the 60th minute when they really when they sort of 
got control of that game, but yeah, it's in the past now, Mont, so I don't really, mm. yeah, don't really want to talk about. Oh, well, yeah. you know what I mean. Absolutely, yeah. two hundred and sixty-one games for the club, Stace. Um, absolute legend. Uh, the most memorable games for you? The hundredth game was was pretty special. We Refresh bit. my memory. Who was that? Yeah, that was Newcastle. Oh yes. Yeah, Newcastle Mount Smart. Um, Johnny Simon was the, was the halfback. Yeah. He had a blinder that day, and we beat Newcastle. We yeah. beat them by forty. It was it was a wet day, Saturday afternoon at, at Mount Smart, and um, you know Newcastle were a good team. Yeah, you know, yeah. with um, the Johns boys and that in there. And Did you love playing against Joey Johns? Love. He loved playing against yeah. you. He he loved you. He, he, he loved you. Every time we we would see him out, he'd just make a beeline for you. Mm. Nah, he really enjoyed playing against him. You know, copped a few. Few hidings from him uh, over the years, but really, uh, yeah, back in those days, it was after a game you'd catch up with the opposition yeah. more than what they do now, you know. And um, yeah, it was always good to have a chat too. Um, I certainly um, made you a better player uh, purely because you watch him play and you go, Oh, I can, can I take that into my game? You know, he just had it all, you know. His kicking game was, was brilliant, you know, he was. Strong, very strong, defended, you know, probably the best half to defend in the game um, in that period anyway. Uh, you know, t running the ball into the line, you know, just his all round game. Was, was, leadership, was the ball leadership. How you, how you could put Joey was when he didn't play, yeah. they lost. Yeah. Remember, do you remember a game uh, <laughs> when Jerome, was it Jerome, broke his jaw? Oh yes, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Over in Newcastle, Jerome Ropati broke Joey's jaw, and they were winning like eighteen nil at half time. Mm. He broke it just mm. before half time. We ended up winning thirty to eighteen, something like that. I, I, any other games? Uh, you know what's a memorable game? It's probably not a good memory for me. Was uh, the Bulldogs game at Wellington, and we oh, yeah. uh, we drew twenty four all, yes. and I missed the kick. Yeah, That's, is that Logan's yeah. fault? Is That's, that Logan's? I blame Logan. Yeah, tell me, yeah. T t tell us why you blame Logan. Uh, so we we were down twenty four eight. I don't know, not much time, eight minutes or six yeah. minutes, and we bang 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 scored tries, scored tries in the in the corner, and I was able to kick a couple of goals, yes. and then we scored a try reasonably close to the post. You know, it's that area. Yeah. It's, it's, know, it's it's that yucky it's area. That yucky area. Yeah. And Logan, no, he goes, Mr. Ace, just take your time, no pressure. <laughs> oh, yeah. thanks, Lokes. <laughs> that was a good night. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. But you know what was a, a good game once was the one when we went to, went to Melbourne. Do you remember in the first year we made the semi-finals yeah. and we we drew. Yeah, we all came with our head came down with our heads off thinking. Yeah, yeah we thought enough. we thought we um, we're blowing it because we we had a comfortable lead. I'm pretty yeah. sure Melbourne scored yep. two late tries. I can't remember the scores, 20 all or something like that. Mm. And players are walking off the field, thinking heads down, we've drawn the game, you know. And then it's Kempi and Ando in the changing room, fist pumping, yeah. you know, going yeah. And we're like, what? And he goes, boys, we've made the semi-finals for the first time in the club's history. And we're like, oh wow, we didn't know. Yeah, you know, we didn't yeah, know a draw yeah. was Absolutely. enough. Jeez, we celebrated that night. Yeah. We it, I still yeah. remember the pool recovery session, which was at our hotel, and it was dusty. Yeah. Because, you know, back in those days, days, it was train hard, yeah. play hard, and, and party hardest. Yeah. I mean, you're part of the coaching staff now. I mean, probably... Yeah. I don't really... I, I, I think I went to bed early that night after that game and got ready for the following yeah, week. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't think so. I'll tell you, the first time I went away with the, uh, the triples in 1998, and I was the 18th man, and it was under Frank Endicott, mm -hmm. And I was rooming with the legend Stacey Jones, and I was like, wow, oh my gosh, I'm with Stacey Jones. And against Melbourne Storm in 1998, mm. and came back from behind, and the kick went up for the bomb, yeah. and it came out, I think it was Taps that went to score the try. So this was after the, the final whistle, Taps put yeah. the ball up, yeah. and then he put the ball down and he scored the yeah. try. Obviously got home, I would have been sleeping through the night, as I do, yeah. and, and um, I had to sort of help dress you, get you out of bed, and I thought, oh my gosh. And I was so worried about what the coach would think. Yeah. Stacey Jones, the legend of the club, uh, was, was potentially going to be late and needed a bit of help. Um, and it was just the way it is. Because yeah. that was it. Right? Things you're you, good at lying. You, you, train, <laughs> you train hard, you play hard, and you party hard. You celebrate your wins, because that was a great win. Look, going back to the, those times, we had some really char good characters yeah. on the team. Who were the characters, mate? 
Oh, you know, around that uh, era, like Quinton Pongia played for the club that year. He was a guy that stripped the ball to set us up to um, yeah. score that try. You know, he was a you know a good character in in his own in his own way. Yeah, he, he's that guy that yeah. trained hard, trained very hard, and played hard. And and you know, obviously, um, you know, the guy that you all looked up to, and oh, yeah. especially going away on on Kiwi tours. You know, he was he was fantastic. I have no doubt there would have been a lot of clubs after you because you were the you know you were the the, the greatest warrior in my opinion. How often uh, were you asked to go to another club and and how close were you to going? This is before Catalans I'm talking about. Yeah, look, oh, Monta was pretty fortunate that um, I never really got to a stage where I would have to go and negotiate. Like I always re-signed with the club a year out from my contract finishing, so I was pretty fortunate that. The club at that time were always keen for me to stay, you know, and and I never saw myself wanting to leave the club. I love this place. Yeah. I love living in Auckland. I love going to Mount Smart, you know. Um, but there was a couple of times where clubs showed some interest, and and um, but it never really got got serious yeah. enough for me to yeah. go. All right, um, it's time time to go. But later on, it, it did. Mm. Who were those days? Because who could you have potentially been playing for, and oh. who, would, who would that other half pairing be? Yeah, Just, I, I don't know. Like early in the early days, you know, um, Graham Lowe was at at the Cowboys, and he yeah. inquired with it. I don't like, think you don't want to go there. Not back then in that team. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I think there was um, Cronulla showed yeah. some interest, like, but nothing got serious. You yeah. know, I think a couple of uh, clubs over in the UK, um, you know, because. It, Back then, there was probably a lot more players yeah. going. You know, like you saw, we saw a lot of players leave early at the Warriors to go to the UK. Like, you know, say the Poor Brothers, mm. um, Joe, uh, Wagner, um, Ali. You know, when you yeah. know, you, players left too early, but it was more attractive to go to the UK at that period. Eh? you mm. know, like the game, the game was very strong over there. Um, was you know. Um, they, they really com probably competed with the, the NRL a bit more. There's a lot more experienced Australian and Kiwis that were playing over there at that yeah, time too. You left and you went to Catalans. And oh, I'd, to I'd done, you know, my time was done here, yeah. I felt. Uh, I, I thought you signed a lifetime contract, man. I remember when they came <laughs> over the loudspeaker, Stacey Jones has signed a lifetime oh, contract. Yeah, no, I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, now it was time to go. Um, yeah, we the club had gone through a bit of a, a tough period there yeah. when when Ando left and then Mick uh, Watson left the CEO and there was a lot of players going and mm. yourself Ali had gone and yeah. um, you know I, if I had my time again I probably you know probably should have stayed for a bit longer yeah. and, and you know I would have loved to have played under um, under Ivan for longer I come back and played one year when Ivan was coach but. You know, I thought it would have been quite neat if I had you know, played, but I think mentally um, yeah, it was time for me to go. Yeah. And had a connection at Catalans with the, um, one of the assistant coaches was the yeah. footy manager, Paul Donkin. Yeah. Um, and there was a, you know, it, was a, it was an exciting time too, because the Catalans were a little bit like the Warriors. Yeah. You know, a new club into, a new comp into the English competition. So the hype was very similar, probably not as big as you know, the 95 when the Warriors came to the comp, but it was, the hype was there when Catalans went into the UK Super League, and yeah. I really enjoyed my time over there. The culture in France was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. You, you went away from the club for a little while. You, you got the chance to come back. When did you realise there was an opportunity to come back and, and play for the side? Uh, so when I came back from France, um, Ivan asked me to come on and do a bit of coaching, um, help out with the halves and, and whatnot. So I was there a couple of times a week doing some stuff, and then he sort of mentioned to me, "Why don't you? You feel like?" Yeah, wanna, you know, play yeah. next year, and there was no pressure to do it. He said, "Look, I mean, if you want to do it, do it, um, but I'm confident that you can do it, and um, you know, there's no pressure for you. You're not going to be the starting half. Yeah. Uh, you'll be there just to help out. You meant to come off the bench. Come off the bench. Neck I did come off the bench. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, um, I actually, I actually enjoyed the the season there with yeah. uh, working under Ivan and seeing how he worked and he was very similar as a player to how he was yeah. as a coach and now look what he's gone on to do. Um, Should I put you on the spot? Unlucky us. Um, it's going to be like that. You're gonna have, not going to have too much time to think of. It's going to be like a daily M system, right? Uh, oh, right? Where you you name your team with the best players you played alongside. It's going to be full back, only one winger, one centre, one prop, 
one hooker, one second row. So we'll go first, full back. Oh, wow, that's on the spot. Uh, first days. I'm going to miss some players out here. Ivan, just his calmness, experience. You know, he was probably the most experienced player in the team. Yeah, you know, only spoke when it really meant something, you know, so he wasn't there to talk, you know, bull. Mm. You know, can you swear on the show? You know, yes, you can, mate. You're, you're Stacey Jones, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> Bing. Franny, he could just find the try line, you know. He was strong, got your sets going, and, you know, he could he could score tries. Centre. Mm, I have to go tops. Just freakish, you know, early ball to him. Um, step off both feet. Um, played tough, but just didn't know what you're going to get from talk sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, when it was good, it was bloody good. Oh, man. It was brilliant. What man. about half? Half. Yeah, you got uh, one, Stace. Yeah, I know. Um, but I'm going to go Gene. Gene yeah. Army. He, he was competitive, Gene. You know, he played the game tough. Um, and I just, you know, at the time when he left, he shouldn't have left the club. Yeah. You know, I thought that, you know, we could have grown into a, a re form a really good combination, of, you know, if he had a had us stuck around so I just like he was he was a tough footy player Gino. We've always had world class props and there's so many to choose from. I don't envy you here choosing your prop. Oh see so I, look I'm just gonna have to go up uh, Jerry. Yeah. You know? I Jerry was you know around that era how tough he was and you know you didn't, didn't say a lot Jerry. You know he talks a lot now. <laughs> <laughs> That's his role mate. Uh, but I loved him on the bus, eh? How good was Jerry on yeah, the bus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, after especially, uh, you know, you wake up from a game and you drive driving to the airport, driving yeah. to Sydney Airport from the hotel, and Jerry, the only time you'd hear him speak would yeah. be on the mic Comedian. telling his That's jokes. Right. So, yeah. yeah, but I, I think Jerry, for me. You're nine? Well, there's you. Oh, no, come on. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> there's you. Sidor, PJ, PJ and Marge. Yeah. I, I think... PJ was probably the one, yeah. the pick, you know. I like, knew you were going to say PJ. Yeah, he was super fit, super competitive. You know what, he, he could just see things happen. And, you know, when you saw some ruck speed, all you had to do was just make sure you were right next to PJ because he was gone. Service very good, you know, how he could pass a ball and stuff. So yeah, then, unlike you, me, then you learned from him. Unlike me, bad ball beat him, you call me. Bad ball beat him. That's all right, that's cool. I had other strings to my game. Uh, second row and lock. Oh, uh, well, it's got Ali. Ali, second row and, and lock's a really tough one. You know, again, there's the South, there's Campo and, you know, and Arwen, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll just go, um, I'll go Arwen um, purely because of what because I Because he's your mate. Oh, he's that's my mate. Yeah. <laughs> You're, left You're my mate too. Round. Oh, good. Sweet man. <laughs> With this club itself, uh, only one of three guys that have played at the top level and also coached at the top level. What does that mean to you? Yeah, look, I uh, I mean, obviously when I took over last year, it was just by, you know, it just had to happen, you know, and I, I don't have any aspirations to be a head coach. I enjoy what I'm doing, yep. you know, um, as, as an assistant and, and, and trying to, you know, the, the area I look after, make sure that that's going really good. Uh, like I'm really loving working with with Webby at the moment because yeah. he's he's actually ha he's helping me, you know, um, where he's been as a coach, the level, you know, what he did at Penrith and yeah. being here previously. I work closely with Webby, so um, yeah, just just learning from from different different coaches, even with the Kiwis, learning from yeah. Michael Maguire. Mm. Stace, once a warrior, always a warrior, and I think you single-handedly at times made people want to play for the club. Many people loving the great game of rugby league and the club, so thank you so much for all you've done and continue to do for the Warriors. No, no worries, Bobs. And thank you for tuning in. This time next week, we will be back for another edition of Once a Warrior. Giants, In behind them, got a terrific bounce for himself. A banana kick out to the right hand side. Great try.